seminar on it Italy. Um, my name is Liz Rowlinson, editor of Place in the Sun magazine. Um, frequently travel to Italy covering it for different newspapers. Fabulous place, my favourite. I confess, I would not say that in, in Spain, but anyway. Um, my experts are here and do, do, do kind of think up lots of questions to ask them at the end of the session or during. Um, can you introduce yourself, Alessandro? Yes. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alessandro Gaglioni. I am a dual qualified solicitor. I'm qualified here in England and in Italy. Uh, and we uh, advise Italian clients, of course, buying property here, and more important, international clients and English clients buying properties in, in Italy. We have an office in Rome as well. We are based in Temple, not far from here. Our stand is just there, uh, right on the corner. So if you if you know after the presentation you have any any further question we will more than help happy to help you and to assist you thank you dave my name is dave benton i'm the owner of uh, vigna verde srl in uh, uh, abruzzo in italy i've lived there now for 11 years uh, my stand is this one here so if you have time afterwards it'd be great to see you on there Federico. Good afternoon i'm federico ranuzzi de bianchi i'm from italy and i'm here to represent uh, the biggest Italian federation of realtors, FIAIP. Um, I'm very happy to be here. This is the first year for our federation. Our stand is right behind us. After the uh, seminar, feel free to uh, have a stroll and uh, ask whatever you want regarding a real estate purchase in Italy. We have some representative of different regions, not all of them. But if you are interested, we can put you in touch with uh, uh, professional real realtors, uh, members of our federation. Thank you. Have you got your very useful brochure with all the regions in? Yes, of course. You should have um, one. Uh, of course, I'm, the, I'm, I'm I left without it. This, this is, is actually quite informative if you want to learn about the different Correct. regions, isn't it? I, I, Correct. I think. It's very handy. It's on two sides. On one, you find the focus on territories. That means you have a, a short presentation of some regions that maybe they are not so famous uh, for British um, people. Not yet. On the other side, you will find some listings as well on some different regions. So you can have... Um, you know, take a look and feel free to collect it if you don't have it yet. Thank you. And I mean, um, your body, uh, professional body, I mean, basically it's key to mention that um, estate agents in Italy are licensed, aren't they? Unlike in the UK. So you can expect a certain level of uh, professionalism. Yeah, correct. Thank you for the question. It's, it's very important to underline that in Italy, there's a long path that a realtor has to uh, walk, let's say, a long training course of uh, around 200 hours, then pass both a uh, written and oral examination. And then the realtors must have uh, insurance policy. So what we are focused on is to have um, professional people working in this field. That's why also our name is FIAIP. The last P stands for professional. Uh, so my suggestion is we have 10,000 members all over Italy in the 20 different regions. You'll find our members everywhere. So my, mm, my advice is to look for uh, professional ones. Thank you. And then if we sort of take the property hunting process from the beginning, what, what, what do you advise people about? I mean, I presume people are coming to you uh, keen on the Abruzzo, but then you've got to hone down your location and think about um, what type of property can you give people some pointers? Yeah, I think definitely the most important thing is is the old thing that everybody says is location, 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 every time. Um, a lot of the regions in Abruzzo, I'm going to talk about, uh, sorry, in, in Italy, uh, are very large regions. So, for instance, Abruzzo, where I work, is a similar size to uh, the four counties of, of Yorkshire. Um, so it is a huge area uh, to cover. So when you're on the internet, and this will, this will be for, for each area in Italy. When you're on the internet, it's easy to find a hundred houses that you like the look of, and every day you go on there. I've done it myself when I was looking. And you find another house, you add that to the list, find another house, you add that to the list. And at the end of the day, it's very difficult to view all of these hundreds of properties. 
you've no idea where these properties are, you don't know what they look out on, you don't know what the town by. For me, the most important thing is to choose an area if you can, or choose two or three areas to see, and then go and have a look at the towns, the areas around that, and just try and close that down because it's such a, a huge area and such a huge amount of properties, it's very, very difficult to see them all in one trip. You really need to find the area that suits you and the, the villages and towns that suit you. And should you try and find a lawyer before you start your search? How, how do you find a, a lawyer and, and what can you expect them to do for you in the process? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much for the question, basically. Uh, I would like to, first of all, clarify that Italy, of course, is a different, we have a different system. Uh, and we have different professionals, of course, looking after you. In Italy, usually lawyers don't do conveyancing. This is not what they do. We do, we, as Italian lawyers, I do, I do what a barista, for example, would do here in this country. What, in, I mean, in Italy, if you are looking for the conveyancer professional, you have to look for a notary, okay? So the notary is the uh, only professional entitled in Italy to transfer land. And it's very peculiar because basically is there is one only one notary overlooking the transaction, overseeing the transaction, uh, and so you don't have your solicitor or the seller solicitor. You will have you will be the buyer. I'm assuming here we are all buyers, uh, and you have the right. It's not a legal right, but it's usually what happens in a transaction. You can choose the notary because you are the buyer because you are supposed to be the weakest party. Uh, the Latins used to say, I always say, caveat temptor, no? buyer be aware. So you have the right to pick the notary and you will have to pay also for the notary's fees. That is usually uh, what happens. Um, so notaries and not solicitor, where you can find one? I think the first step could be to ask your estate agent. Because I know it sounds strange maybe in this country to have a lawyer recommended by the estate agent. You don't know if the lawyer is impartial or not. In Italy, that is absolutely fine because the, not the notary is impartial. The notary doesn't work for the buyer or for the seller. The, no the, the notary works for the uh, good out outcome of the transaction. So there is nothing wrong asking uh, your estate agent to recommend one. And if they recommend one, you can be 100% sure that the notary will be uh, absolutely protecting your interest as well as the interest of the uh, seller as well. So, starting point, I think a estate agent is a good advice. So what happens when you put in an offer? Um, and it, it takes the property off the table and you, you, you pay a, a deposit, is that right? Yes, uh, I will leave, as usual, I will leave this point, I, I will do 50% of this point and then I'll leave the, 50, the other 50% to my colleagues as estate agent. I will do the legal aspect and I want to say only one thing about the offer which I think is vital and when all the problems can arise. Of course, if you decide to instruct from the beginning either a notary or a qualified estate agent, you will not have this problem. But as the interaction is between you and your seller, might be between you and your and the seller in first instance, be, be careful because uh, there is a huge difference here between the English and Italian legal system. Here we all know that if you have an offer accepted, uh, this is not a legal binding obligation. I mean, you can be gazumped by someone else or you can pull out without paying any penalty. In Italy, this is not the case. Once you have your offer, in writing, of course, verbally, you can do whatever you want. But in writing, when you have your offer accepted by the other party, by the seller, that creates a legally binding ob obligation and you cannot uh, go back. So basically, that's the importance to use the right professionals from the beginning because if you put in writing, just very simple word, I want to buy for 100, and the other puts in writing, yes, I want to sell it for 100, that is basically an exchange of contracts, just, just, just to give an idea of what is the legal obligation created. So I'm sure that they can advise you on the specific wording that you want to include in the offer, where basically you say that the offer is void if at a later stage you will find that there are any issues or problems with the with, with the property, you know? So that's more or less about the offer, but maybe you have something to say about the taking out the property off the market. No? Yeah, I think obviously that is the, is the correct legal way of doing things. It is very difficult for you if you're setting out there to have a week in Italy and looking for properties, and you find a property you love, and you say to your estate agent, I would like to make an offer for 100,000 for this property, and the estate agent says, well, yeah, I will give the offer. I also need a check for 10,000 euros, please, to be able to do that. Obviously, most of you would then probably pack your suitcases and head off back to the UK. So what you usually find is um, international agents, certainly ourselves, we have a, a different way of doing it to 
to try and anglify it a little bit and to take into consideration that when you come to Italy, you're not going to have um, a presence in Italy in the sense of um, uh, fiscale, code, codis fiscale, we call it like a tax code. You need to have a bank account. You need to have all these things set up in place to be able to do these contracts. So while Alessandro is correct in saying that is the right way to do it, that is often a little bit further down the line rather than when you're actually there on your viewing trip and suddenly decide that this is the property for you. We tend to take a, a smaller deposit, which is, um, we call a holding deposit, which then removes the property uh, from, uh, from the website. It's not legally binding, uh, as, as Alessandro said, because it's a completely different type of, uh, type of deposit, but it helps us then move to the next stage for us to then to be able to open your bank account, get your um, tax codes and things like that to get to, the, to, to prepare for the next stage. And that's why it is important all the way to use the right people. Don't just go on the internet and, and look at any company. Make sure you see that they are registered in Italy to do what they, what they are saying that they can do. Um, be careful for property finders, property searchers, people like that that are not registered in the country um, where, where you're buying. And also watch out for for people that may they may have a website that looks like an estate agency website, but you may find it could be somebody that's doing it as a second job or somebody that's just trying to do it on the side, as we say, because it is that's where you will have problems. Buying a property in Italy is very simple. The procedure is very simple. It's very very secure. It's very safe. But like anything else in life, if you use the wrong people, you will have problems. But that is the only time that you will have problems. Thank you. It's, it's important also to underline that the figure of the real estate agent um, is responsible for the documents. So he has to verify the cadastral, for example, aspect and the asset um, we, are, um, we are dealing with, either a villa or an apartment or whatever. Together with the notary, as um, the lawyer Alessandro was saying before, um, is a public officer, is an independent figure, he is responsible and liable if something um, is not uh, verified, together with the real estate agent who is working for both sides, uh, both the seller and the buyer. Might be uh, strange for you because in UK um, um, it's just the um, seller that uh, pays the fee, but of course the purchaser uh, pays the fee which is included in the price. In Italy, the realtor works on, for both sides, so the, um, the transaction has to be smooth and correct, and um, so is a third part which is in between. So there is a, um, a guarantee uh, both for uh, the seller and the buyer again. Thank you. And what about mortgages in Italy? Um, can, you, can we borrow money? How much typically? Okay, uh, basically, uh, yes, it is possible. It's definitely possible. Um, the only problem you might have, I think, is if you don't have, a, if you don't live in Italy, if you don't live already in Italy, if you don't have a credit record, a credit score, uh, if you don't have an income, uh, you might maybe struggle. Uh, because of course, it's like here, I mean, if, if someone comes from Italy and tries to get a mortgage here without any record and history. So uh, my advice, the advice I always give is to try to approach, I mean, as an alternative, to try to approach the um, London branches, because they are here in London, of the major Italian banks. Because I had experience in, 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 in the past of clients who have approached Ital the London branches of the, Italian brand, of the Italian banks, so they had a chance to have their credit score, credit record verified here in this country. Maybe in a couple of occasions, banks wanted to have a security on English properties, and they then released funds to buy uh, properties, uh, so actually the property in Italy. So this is an option. I don't know how likely it is for an Italian bank to finance someone who put his foot for the first time in the country. Maybe yes, but it has been uh, done. It's, it's worth applying if you really yes. need that. Um, it doesn't cost anything to apply. Um, it is quite a lengthy process, but it has been done in the past. I think it's a little bit, it has been a little bit more difficult the last few years, but if that is something that you need. And there's also options of international brokers that, that will uh, that, that deal with sort of banks that will lend in, in different countries. Usually, again, like Alessandra said, secured on something here. But it is possible. Um, and
and uh, uh, wills. I don't know whether anyone, I think I know this is your subject. It's, it's more do, Alessandro's do you, business, let's unfortunately, say. Unfortunately, okay, two words on wills, and then I leave, I leave uh, to, my, to, my, to my friends. Basically, wills, an English will is perfectly valid, valid and acceptable and usable in Italy. Of course, unfortunately, not for the deceased person, but by usable by the heirs. Anyway, so if you have an English will in place covering properties everywhere in the world, it abso it's absolutely fine. The, your heirs would be able to use it in Italy. My advice for practical reason, I always advise to make an Italian will also uh, covering only the properties in Italy. Uh, of course, you will have to amend your English will. Of course, your will, English will, you will have to cover only the properties. I mean, everywhere, but except for Italy. You do your Italian will. I'm not going into details, but I'm happy to, to explain how to do the Italian will. It's very, it's very easy, very straightforward. You, do, you don't need a solicitor. You can do it yourself. Um, and this will will cover only the Italian, the Italian properties. By doing so, when it will come the time, in Italy we say in 100 year time, uh, your hair, the life of your hair would be more simple because the, 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 the will would be in Italian already, would be in the Italian form and the notary again, the notary is always involved in Italy with property and inheritance transaction, will be familiar with the will and the process of the probate in Italy, the equivalent of the probate would be more smooth and simple. I think it's quite important as well to add to that that if you do nothing with regards to wills for properties in Italy, um, there is a set of rules in place where basically if you own a property in Italy um, or say, let's say you're a resident in Italy or sorry, you own a property in Italy if, if you buy it as husband and wife to give an example and one of you passes away it's not automatic that that then goes to the surviving partner it's usually shared 50% goes to or 50% of, of the part of the person that's uh, passed away goes to the partner and the other is then split between any children that you may have so it is important to know that because in Italy you can't just write your children out of your will without proving that you've already served, you've already maybe given them something else or already some, they have, um, you may have a property in England where you can prove that you've given uh, your children something else. So it is important to write something down if you don't want that to happen because that is the default if you like. Um, that it will automatically do that. There is nothing really you can do about it unless it's written down. And you have to also give good reasons. If you decide for any reason that you don't want your children to have part of the house, um, it is important that you write uh, write this down because it can be can be contested. Can I, can I just say something? Because I just read on the newspaper yesterday that finally, in in our parliament in Italy, they are discussing a new set of legislation, basically to abolish this rule. Because oh, this is—you could have told me that two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, it will take place maybe in, in, in a few years' time. But because there, you, there has been a huge debate, how it is—I mean, it is moral or not to keep this rule when you have like parents sent to care homes, and they cannot do whatever they want with their money because they have—they must leave a share of their assets, a share of their inheritance, to the same kids that send them to the care home, and maybe yes, that's it. That's why, that's why this huge debate mounted and now finally went to Parliament and they are discussing and my personal advice, because I'm involved here in the Italian community so I, I see many Italian immigrants because I still, I still call out, because English when they go abroad they are expats, here we are immigrants, so basically Italian immigrants uh, and they have this problem and they cannot do whatever they want, they basically they are sent to care homes and they must leave a share of the asset to the to the to, to, to the kids and my personal opinion is of course this is something that must be needs to be uh, abolished and hopefully this will happen but at the moment Dave is absolutely right actually you can do the will you can do the will you can say the will I want to leave everything to my cat for example or to my dog as someone does here in England the will is valid but can be easily challenged by certain categories of people like children husband wife that's the other thing to remember as well um, is if uh, this has happened to us as well, where um, a married couple, the, the the husband passed away, the they don't have children, so his part actually went to his brothers and sisters. Um, so it was left that it, it was husband and wife together. Husband passes away, and the husband's part only got passed so much to the wife, and the rest, as I say, to brothers and sisters. 
So it's something that you have to consider. It's very simple to sort out, as Alessandro said, um, but it's something, don't just leave it for another day because it can be, can be a problem. Um, and yesterday we had quite a few questions about different areas of Italy. Um, Sardinia was of interest, Sicily. Can you just flag up the sort of who, who's here so people can... Um... Here we have um, in our stand some representative of Sicily, for example, of Tuscany, of um, um, a region of Rome area and uh, of Milan area as well. So they are there, so my colleague uh, happy, will be happy to help you out if you would like to have some more information about those regions. In the brochure you find uh, also some focuses, as I was saying before, on some other regions, for example Sardinia. Um, we don't have agency here because uh, there was not room for everybody this year, but we, we can easily uh, help you out and put you in contact with uh, our colleague in Sardinia or other uh, areas if you are interested in. So feel free to, to, to come to our stand and maybe leave your details, your email, and then we'll get in touch with you. And um, in Emilia Romana is, is what is an area in here that you come from. It's very important. Why, I'm, from, I'm, from, I'm from Emilia Romagna. I'm from Bologna. Probably you have heard of it, especially if you uh, like the food, tortellini, lasagne, Mortadella, maybe? Yes or no? Okay, okay. But why, Don't be shy. Why, um, the food might be wonderful, but why, why might people buy a property there? But first of all, because we have a very uh, ni a nice lifestyle. The, the pace, the rhythm is a little slower compared to other hard-paced regions or cities like Milan or Rome, for example, that are more comparable to London. So if you're looking maybe to have a second place, a second home um, in Italy, I think you should consider you know, to, to pick the right place where you can relax and maybe see yourself in the future uh, spending your years in a more relaxing uh, pace with a good quality life and even more affordable, by the way. Bologna is strategic, not because it's my city, but it's one hour from the seaside, two hours from the mountains. We have a very important airport rising every year, so we are facing um, an in impressive increase in terms of tourism. We are half an hour with the ballet train from uh, Florence. Did you hear from Florence? Firenze? Yes, I guess so. And one hour from Milan. So we are very well connected. And the Abruzzo, which I've been to, it's a fantastic area, I agree. Um, it's right in the middle, isn't it? Um, yes. yeah. what, what do people, why do people go there? Um, I suppose it's the, it is off the tourist track. It is, it is famous for tourism, it's famous for Italian tourism and, and uh, uh, other European countries. It's a little bit more, what can we say, we, have, we don't have a Firenze, we don't have a, we don't have a Venice, we don't have a, it, it, for me Abruzzo is more of a lifestyle. Um, obviously, I'm very biased to that area. That's the area that, that I chose. Um, I call it my home, and, and, and it feels like a home. The, the, the region is very original. It's very traditional. You, you're with you, you're with Italians. You, 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 you live the Italian life. And for me, I love Italy. I love all areas of Italy. I love going on holiday to Sicily. I love going to Puglia. I love the, 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 there's not one place I dislike. But when I go back to Abruzzo, for me, that's that's home. Do people buy there because it's cheaper than Tuscany, but kind of it has a lot of the advantages? Definitely. I mean, obviously the price is a huge thing um, because you can buy properties very cheap in a group. So, but I think the main thing is when people get. I th sometimes people think that when they see a, a detached property that would be four or five hundred thousand in Tuscany and they see it in a group so for a hundred or hundred and fifty, they usually think there's something wrong with the area, which usually that is the case. Um, the great thing is when people come, they they see the beauty of our route. So we, we most of our properties are half an hour from the beach and, and 45 minutes from ski resorts. So you can imagine the different types of terrain that you've got in such a short short uh, amount of kilometres. Which airports serve it? Uh, we, at the moment, it, we have uh, Pescara Airport, which flies from Stansted direct to Pescara, and it is expanding at the moment. But it's very very easy to fly into Rome 
Roma is a simple, uh, simple drive to the border of Abruzzo. So it's less than one hour, and uh, it's a fantastic drive. It's a motorway straight through the mountains, and it's uh, so Rome is easy. And Kona, which is in the Marche, is also very close, and also Bari and Naples uh, are all within a couple of hours' drive. So where do the Romans have their holiday? Where do you would you have a holiday home in the south? Where would you pick? Uh, no, I was saying something. <laughs> I was saying something else because my opinion doesn't count because I'm not an estate agent. I'm just a lawyer, so I. I but I support Rome, of course, because because it's my city, and I, I, I of course, I love here. That's my, my my home now. But I, but I'm missing Rome very much. Uh, south of Italy, I think, my personal opinion, Calabria is a is a very is a very it's a very interesting place. A very interesting place because is is full of natural beauties, and uh, and uh, there are some new developments that I know of uh, they are they, they are doing. So check and, and it's not. It's not, of course, it's not Puglia, which is maybe a little bit more more expensive. It's a little bit. It, it, it's still, still, I think, affordable, and, uh, and they have some very new developments, as uh, developments, as I said. So check out for Calabria. That's my personal opinion. But I don't know if what's the weight of my opinion because I'm not, I'm not a market expert. It's just my personal opinion. People do listen to lawyers have... every now and then. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> of course, those clients go. Cl clients actually Google what. What they want to hear from me and then come to you often say listen can you please tell me this this and this the answer not the question so i tried myself to give my opinion i i think it's important because there's not one place which is the best in italy we all have our history we all have our different tastes and our roots which are very important where we raised and everything but italy is incredible because it's made up of so many different places with so many different culture and history and you know landscape food you just drive 30 kilometers from one place to another and you face a completely different scenario so my first suggestion to all of you is to visit Italy uh, once you find a place you fall in love maybe you decide that there is the place to look for a, for a house internet is a tool but when you see things in person, uh, you know, it's different. Yeah, and I have to say, a lot of Italian state agents, um, some of their photography is not great, and they don't show off to the full beauty. I'm not Obviously not your own properties, <laughs> but uh, I just think yeah, some, sometimes they don't promote them very well. That's I, true, isn't it? I think, it's, I think the thing is, when an Italian is buying a property, they look for a, a completely different set of things than, than, than what somebody does that's looking to buy a holiday home or a retirement home. We find, obviously we have an estate agent actually there, if we have Italian clients they're more interested in how many square meters, how close it is to work, uh, what, the con what is made out of, what, how, who constructed the building. It's a dip to show a photograph um, to an Italian is very, that's the last thing. They, they view the property at the very end, they're interested in the facts and the figures. When I, one of my business partners, when we go out to, to view properties, if he goes out on his own, the photographs that he brings back are, are just terrible. They're, they're just unbe Sometimes it doesn't even take a photograph of the outside of the house, because he would just say, it's just a normal house. You get 10 you of know. the bathroom, <laughs> yeah. it's, anyway. It's, uh, but that's just, again, it's just a cultural difference, and um, yeah, that's, that's usually why. They love new builds, Italians, don't they? Uh, we, we, we love the crumbling wrecks and renovating, um, but... Well, I think, yeah, we, we love the new buildings, maybe with uh, more energy efficiency, uh, but in Italy, most of the buildings are historical ones, and I think that you also should consider, since we have uh, the average size of the cities as, let's say, small or medium size, uh, to consider the historical city center where normally uh, most of the people live, and you find everything in terms of museum, uh, food, um, places to hang out, so it's different compared to, let's say, London, for example, which is a huge city and people live outside the city center. So, um, in the city center you know, of, of the, the cities in Italy, we just find historical ones because we we'll, we'll, we have to underline that they are, they are protected by law. So, uh, it's nice because the scenario doesn't change. So you, you can refurbish if it, you need to, and you have to follow some some rules. 
that parking's a nightmare if you have a house in the historical center, isn't it, generally? So, sometimes you just don't need the car. Maybe you, you park it and then you use the bicycle, you, you, you walk, yeah. But of course, parking is, dif is difficult sometimes. Plus, after the food and wine, any exercise you can get, believe me, is, uh -huh, is, yeah. is welcome. <laughs> And they want the new homes, I think. A good thing to say from, from a legal point of view is that one of the stories that you, that you uh, maybe you find on the internet is that what happens if you buy off plan and then something happens to the, to the company, to the builder, maybe they have an issue, they go bankrupt. Now, this is very safe in Italy because it's compulsory for builders to take out an insurance. Okay, so if anything go, uh, anything goes wrong with the uh, uh, business, you will not be affected because they must provide you and they must take out an insurance so don't be afraid to ask i mean your advisors will do but of course to check them because uh, they have an insurance so if, if if anything goes wrong you will be you will be covered this is compulsory for new for new houses yeah that's important to remark it true uh, any questions for the panel or you can come and talk to them after now's your chance The ladies mentioned Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> it's very hard. It's Sunday, we're not allowed to speak now. <laughs> You're an expert. I think the thing, because the lady's asking uh, about becoming a resident after Brexit or, or now, it is, obviously nobody can say what's going to happen, uh, because at this moment in time nobody knows. Uh, uh, I think all of us are of the same opinion. We just cannot imagine anything changing. At the end of the day, we have clients that come from America, that come from Australia, that come from all over the world, that buy and become residents in Italy with no problem whatsoever. English people before Europe existed have always bought in Italy. I cannot imagine the Italian government suddenly saying, nobody from England is allowed to come by and live in Italy. And in the same way, I cannot imagine the British government saying, well, we will take back all our retirees to come and register on our NHS and, and let's, I just cannot imagine these things happening. But nobody can say for sure, but... Hopefully not. My family's here, otherwise I will have to, I will have to leave with my English children. I mean, we will have the right to stay here and they have to go. In, in, in Italy, they're desperate for people to come. They're, they're offering houses for a euro in Sicily yes. and stuff for people to come. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to... I don't think it, it is unlikely that something will change drastically now. Well, thank you. I think we've got to close up for another seminar yes. now. So um, do come and use all this expertise. Uh, all these Italian agents in one place is quite rare. Yes, so, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Very thank much. you.